Anuel Afab and B. A Borda sit my do not really bod Ruan Idu E. A Duin then a Traus Ruliol. Ah, and now in Saisnaga, dear Afab non binaries. Uh, good morning. How's your day been? I'm Ruan and I am a transsexual man. Why do I say transsexual man? Uh, pff, frankly, I'm older than I look. And that's the term that really resonated with me when I began my medical transition a little over 15 years ago now. Uh, trust me, my age is relevant to this. So over a year and a half ago, I uploaded a video which uh, I titled, uh, Trans Men Are Not Transmasculine, in which I offered an oral history of the term transmasculine being a term which first came into wider prominence uh, amongst the uh, trans community online during the heyday of live journal in the early mid noughts In many trans groups on the website at the time, this was used, referred to as uh, and as an I and was taken on as a personal identity for uh, those who were apparently female at birth and strongly identified their gender as being a masculine one, but not exactly people who identified as a man. So, you know, transmasculine fits. It's not trans man. It's not, at the time, genderqueer, the term was more prominent at the time than non-binary, and that was generally understood at the time to be adopted by very flamboyant people. Uh, so, you know, transmasculine people, you know, th these were people who were uh, identified as masculine, but they weren't men, um, but they identified their gender as being an inherently masculine one, just not uninherently male one. Unfortunately, over the last few years, as in, you know, backwards from current year, I've seen the word come to be very broadly, often explicitly defined as an umbrella term for all AFAB trans people, including binary identified trans men. Again, I am a transsexual or trans man, but I'm also gender nonconforming. I don't think that makes me non-binary in any sense, not inherently. It just is who I am. Now, I say this was an unfortunate shift in the use of the term because of a few reasons all of which are ultimately transphobic. And trust me, I am using the logic that I see uh, used by a lot of non-binary people who, believe it or not, I, I'm i very sympathetic. <laughs> I am. I am. I'm not trying to question anybody's gender identity. But... I see people making these statements, such as Brennan, Brennan Beckworth or um, um, Milo Stewart and others online. Those are probably the two biggest ones. But I, I, I'm using the, the logic um, put forward by people who are identifying as non-binary on YouTube and have a relatively big name. So, like I said, by this logic, broadly applying transmasculine to... All AFAB trans people is transphobic because, first, it implies that trans men are inherently masculine and, well, just look at me. I'm about as butch as Quentin Crisp was. Uh, two, it obligates trans men to perform a standard of masculinity that 
at least in LGBTQ spaces, cis men aren't necessarily held to. I chose my words carefully. Um, believe me, I can go on at great length about some of the interesting little subcultures within uh, the community of gay and bisexual men. I'm just saying in mixed LGBT spaces, it is not expected for gay and bi men who are cisgender to be conforming to a standard of masculinity. And point three, which I think might have fallen to the wayside in my first video, uh, is that in using transmasculine as an umbrella term that necessarily includes binary male-identified trans men, this is allowing cis people to implicitly misgender trans men, given that most cis people will accept that masculine and feminine aren't necessarily a gender in and of itself, but a form of expressing one's gender. And so by saying transmasculine, this implicitly misgenders trans men as as given the dominant understanding of the term when used in this way uh which goes back to the way it was used during the heyday of live journal and that understanding is that people on the afab transgender spectrum are masculine but not men and if you think that Item three on that list sounds a bit hyperbolic and that maybe I'm straw manning. You would indeed be wrong. Because a couple of days ago, I was watching a video by Pastel Bell. She's an bisexual identified LGBT focused YouTube commentator and she doesn't always stick to LGBT topics that you know, she will comment on, but that does, does seem to be her broad focus. So a couple days ago, I was watching one of her videos in which she's running down like a top seven list of the scandals of influencer Nikita Dragun. Uh, and at about the four minute and 50 second mark, Bell says, I understand that a lot of trans women and trans masculine and also non-binary people. Did you hear that? Where she said trans women and also trans masculine and non-binary people. If you check out the entire video, you would see that never once does she refer to cis men as anything but men. That is seems to be the common practice throughout every video she's done. Cis men are men. On her Calvin Gara video, yes, she did often say trans man and trans men, but, you know, like, she didn't do that here. She didn't do that here. But, you know, when it's cis people, she never says, you know, masculine people. More to the point, she never once in any of her videos, especially those that I've seen, Never once does she refer to women and masculine people. Because nobody does that. Nobody does that. Like, even cis people understand that that seems a bit redundant because, well, you know, some women are masculine and not all men are masculine. So why do it this time? Why say trans women and trans masculine and non-binary people. She didn't say trans women and trans men and non-binary people. No, she said trans women and trans masculine people. I'm willing to give her the benefit of the doubt and at least until proven otherwise and assume that this was a mistake, that at most this was 
a statement that she made out of well-intended ignorance because somebody managed to convince her that this is the best nomenclature when referring to trans men. But again, if you're going to say trans men are necessarily transmasculine, this is transphobic because of points one and two, especially, right? And if you're going to refer to a group of people that includes, that necessarily includes, as has been insisted by people on Facebook at me, will necessarily include all trans men. <laughs> that, that literally makes no sense. The thing that gets me about the juxtaposition of trans women and also trans masculine people is that it would imply all over the place those specific words imply all over the place that trans women equals a kind of woman okay but trans masculine equals Apparently, female at birth persons performing masculinity, so not men. Not men. G given this exact phrasing, this also would imply that if trans women are women, but the implied opposite being, or at least the opposite of the binary that could easily be inferred is transmasculine, then, well, you know, trans women aren't really women either, because, you know, like, it's trans women and trans masculine people. Ergo, there's no such thing as trans men, as can be inferred from that phrasing. And if trans, if there's no such thing as trans men, because trans masculine doesn't inherently mean men, then the juxtaposition alongside uh, the opposite on the binary of trans women is that, well, trans women aren't women either. You know, but it's more polite to refer to trans women as trans women than it is to refer to trans men as trans men. Somehow trans men, under the this inference, would not actually be men. Ergo, trans women aren't actually women. So why? Why do I address this to AFAB non-binary folks? Why do I do that and not cis people? Why, you might be asking. Are you not addressing this to cis people since it, it was a cis person who did this? It's actually been a bunch of cis people who did this, but this was the one that really stood out to me. This was the one that gave me a legit psychological mental illness trigger. Like, it could not get out of my head for a couple of days, and I was seriously feeling gender dysphoric for the first time since my lower surgeries. So, yeah... But why? Why don't you address this to cis people? It was a cis who made the mistake. But then again, if you think about it, it was not cisgender people who coined the term in the first place. It certainly was not cisgender people who identified as transmasculine on live journals circa 20 2 It certainly was not cis people who shouted me down on Facebook a couple years ago insisting that transmasculine has always been an umbrella term that includes all trans men, even some ones, even though that is literally contradicting yourself, honey, but sure, you do you, you crazy little teenager, even though, like, you were barely out of diapers when I was asking people on LiveJournal, what does transmasculine mean? 
why do you say you are trans masculine and uh but yeah like th this th this insistence on trans masculine as an umbrella term that includes practically all trans men this is really no worse than when a couple years ago AMAB, as in apparently male at birth, non-binary icon, and yes, he is an icon, he wrote Rocky Horror, Richard O'Brien, uh, a few years ago, uh, came under fire on trans Twitter for basically parroting Jermaine Greer and uh, describing uh, trans women as being merely the image of a woman, but not with the entire life experience of a woman. That's probably paraphrased a little bit. I will hopefully find the original quote, link in the description box down below. If I did not, somebody please yell at me in the comments to do that. And frankly, though, the fact that AFAB non-binary trans mask people have been getting away with insisting this is an umbrella term that actively and heinously misgenders trans men, that you've been getting away with this for years now, it speaks volumes. Like, it not only speaks to how pervasive internalized transphobia is amongst, for the remainder here, ostensibly binary trans men, but also to how AFAB envies how so many have been so opportunistic to take advantage of trans men's internalized transphobia, decide to opportunistically privilege yourselves by speaking over trans men in trans spaces. Like, I used to think some trans women were intoxicated emotionally somehow by insisting that there are many trans spaces especially offline but very much on that have been dominated by trans male voices this last decade ish but then it occurs to me that most of the binarily identified trans men, most of the ones that I know on some personal level, granted there have only ever been two who I would actually count as friends, and that's because they're about as weird and gender non-conforming as I am, well maybe not as gender non-conforming as I am, um, <laughs> but that's another story for another time. But you know, like most of the binarily identified trans men I have known in my life, as soon as they reach a point in their transition where they feel fairly comfortable, they kind of fall out of trans spaces they just kind of move on like because they're allowed this little bit of invisibility because to an extent anyway it is generally easier for trans men to assimilate especially if they're gender conforming if you know conforming to masculinity as men it's generally easier for them to assimilate as men and have few, if any, people in their day-to-day -day lives who didn't know them before they transitioned to know that they transitioned. So so that means that like we're not completely off the hook either, because, you know, like once we're able to reach a point where some combination of a of internalized transphobia and gender dysphoria can, you know, reach a low in our lives where we're comfortable enough, we just kind of take off from trans spaces. So I've concluded it's not necessarily trans men who are speaking over trans women and trans feminine voices in trans spaces. It's the trans-masculine non-binaries. Because, as I said, the overwhelming majority of other trans men who I have known in some meaningful sense in my life, we just kind of drop out of trans spaces, especially IRL at some point.
every so often I wonder why I become so frustrated by uh, by trans spaces. And then I kind of step back and I realize, yeah, no, no, it's it's because I'm I'm just like I'm done arguing with teens and young 20 somethings. I'm done arguing with high school and college kids. I've got other things I would rather do with my life. Like I would rather DJ my radio show. I would rather make my own music. I would rather apparently blow my tax return by spending more than the cost of my own rent for an obscure Welsh musical instrument that I don't even know how to play, but that I'm assured with my background in viola and at least a modicum of understanding how to play guitar. I do not play it very well at all. But I'm told, you know, that, like, I... I could play it passably. I could probably play it passably. This, you know, my background in viola is an asset for the truth. Uh, but yeah, this costs more than my rent. I've been, I've been flip-flopping with anxiety about this ever since I made the purchase, but I know once it arrives, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be glad I did. This is the first time in my life I've literally done anything like this. Breathe, honey. Breathe. You aging Nancy boy past your prime. I know, I know. Like I said, I'm, I'm done arguing with with high school and college kids, I would rather do other things with my life. I would rather have my gorgeous antique furniture. I would rather, like, I would literally rather bend over even when it is difficult for me to bend over and scoop up cat vomit because somebody ate too fast again than argue with high school and college kids on the internet. There are so many things I would rather do. And I do them. So I kind of scuttled off from online trans spaces and I go and do the things I would rather do. In fact, um, aside from a few recent streams, I only made like maybe three videos tops that I upload out of a couple hundred at this point. Just like legit uploads where I even mention that I'm trans. In fact, like I, I saw some people one time a couple years ago who just kind of took for granted that I am a man and we're not even aware that I was trans until somebody else mentioned it, but that, that's okay. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. Teenagers doing their thing, like the whole, like non-binary kids, when you see some of the weirdest shit that people will say is their gender, more often than not, this is people trolling because pose law, but the rest of the time, it is literally young teenagers who are not necessarily goofing off for attention, but who are testing their own limits um, with their family and friends, with their community, with themselves. They're, they're trying to see what fits. They're trying on an identity to see what fits. We all do it at that age. And so that is not my problem. That is not my problem. But what is my problem is when I see things like Pastel Bell's little gaffe there of trans women and trans masculine people, which the average native speaker of English will have a subconscious go ahead when they hear that. They will get a subconscious go ahead to believe that even though trans women are women, they're not really any such a thing as trans men because otherwise why wouldn't she have said so and if there aren't really trans men or if the closest equivalent is very clearly not men then trans women aren't really women either you know like there that's where the water starts dripping down the slope some more and again like i said this is point three by using trans masculine as an umbrella that it necessarily includes trans men, you're giving cis people the go-ahead to implicitly, which often then becomes explicitly, misgendering all trans people. Every time I wonder why I get frustrated with trans spaces, I realize it's because these trans mask as an umbrella people who very clearly state that their gender identity is some form of non-binary, uh, but they have 
taken over trans spaces, especially those that were initially built by and for binary trans men. And this has almost certainly been allowed to happen due to the rampant internalized transphobia that many trans men hold on to, but they don't really express it in the way that trans women do, and you can have your own little discussions about why that is. I've got some thoughts, but this has already been a half hour. I've been talking to my phone about this. The reason that I think a lot of these spaces, especially those made by and for trans men, uh, have been taken over by AFAB non-binary people, whether they wish to add man to that non-binary or not, that's, that's, that's them. But they, they believe that, you know, with their soul, that non-binary is an important part of their gendered experience. Okay. But, like I said, us, us trans men who just kind of reach a point where we're, we're fairly comfortable, and, you know, some of us may, you know, try to steer the narrative that that, that is being dominated by transmasculine non-binary folk, we try to steer it back on course to at least be fairly representative of not just their experience, but the experiences of not only binary trans men, but also binary trans women, if this is mixed AFAB, AMAB space. But at some point, we kind of realize that we're outnumbered in trying to steer the narrative back on course. And we realize we're outnumbered, and we decide we've got better things to do than argue with high school and college kids on the internet. And at the end of the day... Shouting at people to just do better is just as absurd as when right-wingers go telling people to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Because this is not a statement designed to teach, nor is it a statement designed to motivate somebody to go and learn. This is a statement that is designed to shut down all dialogue, either via blind compliance to the dominant narrative that is that, that one is being told to just do better at, or shut down dialogue via alienation. So rather than do that, like, I'm not going to just tell you all to just, to just do better without any suggestions on how to begin to do better. So, here's my advice on this. Stop it. Just stop using transmasculine as an umbrella. Just stop using this as an umbrella term. Because of all the reasons I listed at the beginning of this, it is transphobic to do so. Because, one, it presumes that all trans men are masculine in their self-expression, in how they feel, they relate to their gender I mean, myself, I, you know, as I was saying on a stream the other day, I wanted to be like glam rock era Freddie Mercury when I was five years old. I dressed up as Boy George for three years in a row for, um, on Halloween. These, this, is the, this is the kind of manhood that has always resonated with me, is the effeminate manhood. And, and to say that trans masculinity inherently includes feminine trans men, I'm like, you're, you are contradicting yourself. You're literally contradicting yourself when you say that. Y you just are. You just are. Because as a lapsed English major, yes, I understand that prescriptive vocabulary is not always true, but language is a social construct. And when you are making statements that are difficult 
to come together. Y you you are abandoning any sense of credibility. Furthermore, you sound like somebody who reads Foucault and masturbates furiously. The notion of a transmasculine umbrella is transphobic. Especially when it is used to replace the term trans men. One, it assumes all trans men are masculine, which is transphobic. It is saying that if you are a man, then you are masculine in your manhood. Which is transphobic. Two, it places greater pressure on effeminate trans men to perform masculinity to a potentially uncomfortable extent in order for one's gender to be seen. And as I've been listening to the depathologize and um, trans-inclusive gender abolition uh, arguments from those YouTubers who have made them, by placing an implied pressure on effeminate trans men to perform masculinity in order for their gender to be seen, that is transphobic. And three, by referring to the transmasculine umbrella, which necessarily includes binary identified trans men, this creates an easy way for cisgender people to hold on to the idea that trans men aren't really a kind of a man, but instead a masculine woman. Because that's just how the average cis people sees it. And this is evident in examples like Pastel Bell's little slip up of. I understand that a lot of trans women and trans masculine and also non binary people. I, I also really want to believe that it should go without saying that you shouldn't speak over trans men, but clearly you've all been doing that yourselves or just sat on your hands and remained complicit when others have done it and continued to speak over trans men and take advantage, take opportunistic advantage of the rampant internalized transphobia that many trans men who still utilize trans spaces tend to feel. To push this trans masculine umbrella, which somehow includes all trans men, because Man means masculine, right? It doesn't mean you sit here rolling your hair for several, for like over an hour last night, and then by the time it's bedtime and you've finished uploading a mixed cloud, uh, and your hair still isn't set. Like, like, when you're talking over trans men who are not happy with this being used as an umbrella term for all the reasons I stated, you're really not even thinking about the basic implications that it carries. As I said, language is a social construct. And when the average cis person hears masculine, they don't necessarily think the person is a man. The image that might immediately come to mind might be of a man, but they can very readily accept the idea that some women are masculine in their presentation and their interests. And they may not necessarily be tolerant of that, but they can understand the concept that masculinity is not inherent to manhood. Like, when there is literally an LGBTQ-focused commentary YouTuber who has Practically, last I checked before I started filming, around 60 times my subscriber count. Me and growing. Obviously, she has a far greater, a far larger platform than I do. 
So w- when she slips and says trans women and also trans masculine and non-binary people, that gets to those 60,000 some and many more who aren't even subscribed that subconsciously affirms to the cis people in the audience that there are trans women and then there are afab people who think they're trans but they simply aren't men <sighs> this is not an umbrella term this is not an umbrella term it was not designed to be an umbrella term and when used as an umbrella term it is fundamentally transphobic and toxic and we are now seeing cisgender people perhaps ignorantly perhaps out of well-intentioned ignorance use it as a term in place of trans men whilst still referring to trans women as trans women and so using the umbrella term you say saying that trans masculine is an umbrella term that includes trans men this was a mistake i don't know when it happened i don't know when it started happening but it was a mistake from the first person who did that it was a massive heinous transphobic mistake and it is now a term being used by cisgender people in place of trans men which only subconsciously reinforces the transphobic beliefs that trans men are not men but simply some kind of apparently female at birth person who performs masculinity and again with the slippery slope to thus it also invalid justify invalidating trans women from their womenhood so this is now actively harming trans men and it will have a ripple effect onto trans women because after all in the english language it is seen that masculinity and femininity are a dichotomy there is an in-between space that we refer to as androgynous um but you know like if the opposite of masculine is feminine and the opposite of man is woman but if trans masculine people aren't exactly men so we don't call them that then why do we say trans women why don't we just say trans feminine because that is that is what the thing is like they're not really women you know they're they're feminine but they're not really women and that is what using the trans masculine term the term trans masculine as an umbrella that is what it does it reinforces transphobic ideas this should have never happened as an umbrella term it should have remained a an exclusively a particularly non-binary identity because that is where it has been useful that is where it had been most useful and did the most good in the past by expanding it to an umbrella term you are actively doing harm to other trans people and again i am using the logic explained by every non-binary trans tubers logic i am using the logic you explain you all use to explain how transphobia works and this is how it works first we've got somebody who at most out of well-intentioned ignorance at the at the least might have just it might have just been on ignorant slip up due to a previous conversation she'd had before filming and recording anyway first we begin with incidents like this first we begin with these tiny incidents and then it becomes more widespread it is not an umbrella term using it that way 
is patently transphobic. And if you continue to do so after watching this and listening to me carefully explaining this, then you have decided that you would rather actively harm other trans people because it makes you feel better. Like, that is why, you know, that, that is basically the logic used by Ben Shapiro when he goes out of his way to misgender Blair White. You know, it, it, it makes you feel better to misgender trans people. It makes you feel better to be transphobic. So if you've taken in everything I said about how using transmasculine as an umbrella term that necessarily includes trans men of any and all sort, then, then you are saying that you don't care that it's transphobic because it makes you feel better to sit, to say the transphobic thing. And I think I'm done with this. All right. I got to go edit out a whole lot of pauses and dead space and whatnot and a couple of verbal um, slips and uh, various little like verbal noise ticks that I make while I'm trying to contain myself and all of my glorious spookiness. So, as always, be sure and take care of yourselves. Have exactly the kind of day you deserve. And as part of this, be sure to wear your sunscreen. Don't you want to age like a like a vampire as basically everybody in my family does? It's like, like I show people photos of my aunt. The woman is 70, 73, and they think she's in her late 40s, early 50s. Like my, my dad had the same thing. My dad had the same thing going. I, I, I don't, we just, but you know, like, yes, in my case, it's good genes, but little sunscreen never hurts. So wear your sunscreen. Otherwise, take care of yourselves and have the exact kind of day you deserve. As always, if you wish to stalk me on social media, um, there should be a link in the description box down below. And if, if you feel this was entertaining enough to give me a dollar, feel free to do that. There's a PayPal tip jar in the description box down below. If you, like some people um, who I will list shortly have more dollars than cents join the ranks of my patreon supporters such as ali valkyrie she is a uh, polytheist blogger and anarcho-socialist activist she's also an american expat living in rennes france and she uh she speaks not only uh fluent english which is her first language but also french and breton and I, I, my, my 20 years of disuse in Welsh now make me feel very bad about myself because she, she's learned this in under four years and I feel bad about myself now. Uh, you'll also join, um, my uh, friend Susie Bika, who is a, uh, Canadian car, um, comic strip artist, and she also does other visual media as well, but she's best known for comic strips. She has illustrated pamphlets for Green Party Canada. That's got to be important to somebody, right? And also, uh, Karen L., who just thinks I'm neat and sends me cat photos on Instagram. You don't have to be a Patreon supporter to send me cat photos on Instagram. I'll take them from just about anybody. Yeah, other than that, um... Uh, Nosta Ahuil, uh, I forgot from, uh, Karthav Murn. <laughs>